Okay, um, we'll start on the next session and we're going to be looking at access to research data. So, um, on the on the first day, we talked about um, accessing some of these uh, portals like um, data.gov and, and the EU portal. But these are very generalized. No. These are very generalized portals. So what we're going to do now is look at more specific portals and, and uh, actually go and look for some research data. So a data repository provides the long-term storage and access to research data. And this can be done, first of all, through a data provider that offers research data and its metadata exposed through an interface or a portal. Or secondly, it can be through a service provider um, that can harvest the metadata um, from the research, the researcher and the research data and build value and add services. So that there's two options. You can do it yourself or you can do it through a, a service provider. So what we're going to do here is look at um, three different portals. One is a global portal, one's a thematic portal, and one's a, a, a national portal. Um, the World Ocean Database, which is a, a global um, repository for physical and chemical ocean, oceanographic data. OBIS, which is the Ocean Biogeographic Information System, which is a repository for biogeographic data. And we'll look at a, a national portal, which is the Integrated Marine Observing System, or IMOS, which is an Australian portal. So first of all, let's have a look at the World Ocean Database. Is anybody familiar with the World Ocean Database? Have you used it before? Okay, well, this will be new to most of you, I guess. So the World Ocean Database represents the world's largest collection of ocean profile and plankton data. It's available internationally and it's available without restriction. This data is submitted from a number of different um, organizations around the world from um, the IOD's network of international of national oceanographic data centers also through international ocean observing projects such as GTSPP and Argo and also um, through a project which um, which uh, was underway, sponsored by IOD, called GODAR, which is the Global Oceanographic Data and Archaeological Rescue Project. Now, this project went and found data that was not in a digital format and digitized it and made it available um, through the World Ocean Database. So the latest version of World Ocean Database is 2013. It's been producing um, updates of the product for, for a number of years now. So the latest one, 2013, has got over 30 million temperature profiles in it, 60, uh, 6 million salinity measurements. The historical records go way back until 1773. And this uh, database is maintained by NOAA. So, I mean, people were collecting data way back in the days of sailing ships. They were still collecting data and this data is, is available through the World Ocean Database. So the WOD consists of 11 different data collections. Now these, uh, you may be familiar with some of these. First of all we have ocean station data. These are usually low resolution um, measurements or plankton data. There's also high resolution um, CTD data, which collects um, temperature and salinity. Expendable bathythermograph, which is another instrument which collects temperature data. Mechanical bathythermograph, which is a, an older type of um, instrument that's uh, no longer used, also collecting temperature data. There's profiling floats, such as the Argo floats. There's drifting buoys, moored buoys, um, the autonomous uh, pinniped bathythermographs. Anybody familiar with that? 
they're actually instruments they put on mammals such as seals um, and they measure um, temperature and salinity as the seals are swimming around and diving and whatever and that data is transmitted back to um, whoever's the investigator and uh, finally the data is made available through the World Ocean Database um, and there's a few other there, the glider data um, and, and some bucket data. So all these um, different collections are available through the World Ocean Database and we'll be going to have a look at a few of those in detail uh, in, in our exercise. So the data is, is accessible through a, a, um, a portal and it's called WOD Select. So it's a system that allows you to search for data and through, a, through an interface. It provides a distribution map um, and a, a cast count for the, whatever your search criteria is. And then it gives you the option to extract that data and download that data. And that's the URL there that, that goes to the WOD select. So this is just a look at the, um, at the interface. First of all, these are the selection criteria. You can search for data based on one or more of those search criteria. For example, geographic coordinates. If you know the area that you want to find data, you put the geographic coordinates. Um, you can put the dates, the observation dates. You can put the data type, and that's just what I mentioned before. You have o OSD, ocean station data, CTD, etc. Uh, you can put in a variable, say temperature or salinity or nutrients. Um, any of these um, options you can select if you want um, a country. Now when it says country, it doesn't mean the country where the data is. It means the country um, of the, who collected the data. Um, the ship, the cruise, project, institution, any of those things you can build your query on. Once you've built your query, you can, then, uh, you can then select how you want the data. The data can be provided to you in a, what they call a, a WOD native ASCII format, or alternatively in a common, comma delimited variable, a CSV. A CSV is probably the most useful, then you can use that um, in any other application that you want. You can define um, how the depth levels You've got two options there. You can have the, the data presented to you as it was observed at, at the um, observed data level or at a standard depth level. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Once you've, once you've chosen all your, the options here, you can extract the data, you put in your email address and a few minutes later, they'll send you an email saying your data is ready to download and you can download it from the FTP site at NOAA. So for standard depths, um, these standard depths are used for um, analysis in climatologies, for example. Um, when you measure data, data are uh, measured at a specific depth, whatever the depth might be, but they're never usually measured at an exact depth of 20 metres or 50 metres or whatever. It's probably collected at 43.2 metres or 47.5 metres or something like that. But what the standard depths does, it aggregates the data at these standard um, levels. So if you have a, a data that's collected at 42.3, um, the standard depth for that would be 40. So it's halfway between that, it'll go to the next one or to that one. So the idea of that is that a lot of people um, want to develop climatologies, so they want standard depths. They want, they want to do an analysis of, of the um, salinity at 100 metres. So to do that, they need to be able to aggregate the data at those standard levels. So that's one of the options when you're choosing the data from WOD Select. So within the World Ocean Database, they've developed a product called the World Ocean Atlas. So this is a, a standard set of climatological analysis. 
um, from the data which is in the World Ocean Database. So the World Ocean Atlas consists of uh, objectively analysed global uh, grids at standard depths that I just mentioned to you before for the following parameters. So you have temperature, salinity, and dissolved oxygen, apparent oxygen, uh, percentage of oxygen saturation, phosphate, silic silicate acid and nitrate. So any of those um, parameters you can uh, select from the World Ocean Atlas. Now World Ocean Atlas is not the um, in situ data, it is a derived an analysis of the data. So these are some examples from the World Ocean Atlas. You can have a um, annual sea surface temperature this particular one is at a quarter degree grid, so it's a gridded analysis. The next one is uh, salinity, that's an example of January salinity, once again a quarter degree surface. You can also do, do the standard depths. Um, the next one is the annual dissolved oxygen at a one degree resolution, in this case it's a 500 metre depth. But any of these um, different parameters can be selected once again from the World Ocean Atlas. So the World Ocean Database's data policy, I don't know, it's a blank. I've, I've looked, I cannot find anything about what their data policy is. They say that it's uh, freely available uh, for use, but I, I can't see any licensing or any data policy um, associated with the World Ocean Database. So what I do do is a, um, an activity, so I want you all to do this and what we're going to do is to go back and have a look at World, uh, the WOD Select. Uh, activity one. So what I want you to do is to go to the WOD select. The, um, the URL is in the in the uh, presentation there. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to search for ocean station data collected between January the first. 1990 and 31st of December 2010 for that particular area. Have a look at the data distribution plot and the cruise list. What do you observe about the distribution of the data? How many different countries um, collected data in the area? So you should be able to find that information from the, from the distribution plot and from the cruise list. And then I want you to repeat that exercise for expendable bathythermograph data. So once again, search for the data collected between that date and that area for bathythermograph and answer the same questions. And then what, do you, what differences do you observe between the two data sets? So it's not necessary here to download the data. You don't need to, I'll give you the option to, to download it. You don't need to go to that next step. But when you do search for the data, you'll find there's an option to look at the cruise list, there's an option to look at the distribution plot. So just have a look at that and, and try to answer those questions. So that's the URL there where you're going to be searching. <laughs> 